Jordan has offered to swap an imprisoned would-be bomber for a downed and captured pilot in a deal with the IS group. The initiative leaves the fate of a Japanese hostage unclear. No mention has been made of Japanese citizen Kenji Goto, a veteran war reporter who has also been held by the group. Muaf al qasaysbe was captured after his jet crashed in northeastern Syria last month. He had been on a bombing mission against IS fighters. His fate was thought to be tied to that of Kenji Goto after a video was released allegedly showing the Japanese national saying he had 24 hours to live unless Jordan agreed to the prisoner swap. Ali Rushawi has been held in Jordan over her role in a bombing that killed 60 people in the capital, Amman. The Japanese government says it will continue to fight for the release of Kenji Goto, a Japanese journalist being held by the IS group. Kenji's mother also appealed for her son's life after a new video appeared to show the journalist saying he had 24 hours to live unless Jordan released a named prisoner. Kenji's mother also appealed for her son's life after a video appeared to show the journalist saying he had 24 hours to live. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has called on Jordan to cooperate in working for Kenji's quick release but has vowed that his country will not give in to what he calls terrorism. Afsal Ahmed, The Report. Well, joining me still in the studio is Mamun al Abbasi, news editor at the Middle East Eye website. Thank you for staying on. Okay. Um, what happens now if the Jordanian pilot is released in exchange for the prisoner? What about the Japanese hostage? Uh, it depends on how the uh, Japanese government will, will deal with it. Will they be negotiating behind doors and give in to ransom demands? Or will they um, you know, carry on saying no and risk um, the death of the, uh, of the hostage? We don't know how the Japanese government will react. But what about in Jordan itself? Suppose the pilot is released. Will there be great praise for the King of Jordan for having done that? Or will people say he's given in to terrorism? Um, it's very, it's d depending who you ask. I don't think many people be, would say he's given in to terrorism inside Jordan. I think most Jordanians would rather see a, a settlement and uh, because you have lots of, there's a threat of ISIS inside Jordan and nobody wants to wake up that, uh, that uh, problem there. So people inside Jordan would want it just to go away. But maybe he would, you know, he would get told off by his American allies or, or by the coalition of um, be, um, behaving on, you know... In, in a, in a, in on the a, other hand, the trade would be for this woman who killed many people in a, right. a bombing attack 10 years ago in Amman. So wouldn't some people be angry that of course. This, and, she's and now and being let out? Right, of course, and, and rightly so. And rightly so, they, they would be, but they would be weighing um, one, it's not just probably the Jordanian, one Jordanian life, but they're thinking of a, a possible future attack inside Jordan. So it's that kind of balance that they have to make. The, the, the relatives and the, the government has every right to have every right to make the uh, uh, the perpetrators of the attack pay the full punishment, but sometimes they have to weigh certain security factors and. And how sort of unpopular is the Jordanian participation in the American-led coalition against ISIS? Well, as, as popular as uh, ISIS is in the region. Um, Many people kind of look at the double standards uh, of certain Arab governments or certain Muslim governments in the in the Middle East. So the, yes, they are not they are not for ISIS. They're not happy with ISIS. It is one of the worst things that happened in the region. But they're not happy with the double standards, and they think that certain involvement, if you if you involved you are involved superficially and not by tackling the root causes, you are more likely risk further escalation and things worsening. What are the root causes? Well, the root causes in, in Iraq and in Syria, both cases, the sectarian governments there, um, in Iraq in particular, for example, during the reign of Maliki, and perhaps less so now. Um, I mean, you have to remember that they, they have uh, um, an environment that's hosting them, an environment that traditionally does not like ISIS, but because they suffered so much at the hands of uh, Shiite militias, that become, ISIS becomes the second evil. Despite their hatred for ISIS, for, the, for their radicalism, for the differences, the, the, the alien way of life, that ISIS has, but they ha they've suffered much more at the hands of uh, soldiers before, Iraqi soldiers, and currently at the, at the hands of Shiite militias. Um, the same goes in, in Syria. Uh, as bad as ISIS are, the regime and the atrocities and human rights violations by, uh, by the government of Assad and the foreign fighters backing him, as in, as in Shiite foreign fighters from Hezbollah, from Iraq, from Afghanistan. 
for the locals, these are a worse al alternatives. You don't hear about it a lot in the news, uh, but it, for the local population, they feel it. They're not bothered with what's on television. They're not bothered what the West is saying. They look at this a bigger evil on the ground and ISIS. And they have just between, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And if you don't tackle that, then there's always been some ground that will tolerate ISIS. And what about within Jordan? I mean, are there people, young Jordanians, who are looking at ISIS, not in, so much in terms of their very extreme punishments and so on, but the fact that they seem to be fighting corruption and uh, a lot of young Arabs maybe in Jordan, Jordan feel that their government is quite corrupt and ISIS, in a sense, represents a, a clean broom. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't go as far as that because ISIS is clearly corrupt too. But the, the danger is when people lose their mind, when there is, a, like, um, as we see, like in Egypt, for example, when there is a room for democracy, room for what people call moderate Islamism through the ballot box, if you close all these doors and you shut all those windows, people are, will become radicalized and, be, and become it's all or nothing. So they behave in a, in a very irrational way and turn to ISIS, not because ISIS is good, it's because it's the only way that they vent um, their anger from, from the and do we, do we know how many young Jordanians have actually gone over to join ISIS as fighters? N not, these figures are, are really not accurate. Some people, sometimes it's downplayed by certain sides. Sometimes it's well if inflated by other sides. We, we really have no, no sure way of knowing. Because the, a huge number of Tunisians have gone over and Libyans and so on. But Jordanians, I mean, are they providing really quite a small number as far as we can tell? I accept that we don't know the exact number. Um, people also mistake people who go there for humanitarian reasons or people who go there to fight alongside uh, moderate rebels. They see it, they're, they're doing what George Orwell do, did when he went to Spain and fought the fascists. So not all of them are uh, having the ISIS mentality. Obviously, some of them go there and discover that this is not why they went there. And they've discovered the, you know, the brutality of, of ISIS, and they're trying to run, run back. But then there's no way to, to go back to, especially in the West. There, they will be treated with suspicion or, or jailed. So lots of people go there and discover that ISIS is not what it is, but they just can't go back. A final point on Japan. I mean, Japan is miles away from the Middle East. Uh, they joined this coalition, perhaps a little bit surprisingly, obviously under American pressure. Do you think now, having lost one person and possibly lost, lost, having to lose another one, they will quietly pull back and uh, leave the coalition? I think in terms of money, I think they will continue to, to fund. Their name will continue to, to be there. Maybe less visible presence. I mean, these two people weren't part of the official. They're not officially representing Japan. They, they weren't there on, their, on an individual basis. Japan is strange. It's uh, before 2003, its constitution banned it from from uh, military intervention overseas. They had to amend that in the case of uh, 2003, so that they can join the coalition in Iraq. And mostly, the Iraqi uh, insurgents never went after the Japanese because they're very friendly with the locals. They grew mustaches. They blended in. So generally, they're not they're not hostile, and they're not perceived as hostile. This is a, like an, an exception in, in this case. So it must have been a shock to the Japanese public when yes. two people were taken hostage. So maybe that changes. Maybe that would increase the demand by Japanese to say we should be taking part against IS. It, it, it could. It could. They never really, I think, it, 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 there was never really a blowback in their first participation in 2003. Maybe this time it will be different. Well, on that note, thank you very much, Mamoun Alabasi.